one. Scott Taylor, the Data Whisperer, welcome to the Data Strategy Show. 66 questions, data leaders unplugged. We're going to unplug you today, Scott. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm ready to be unplugged. I get too <laughs> plugged in too, too many times. But Samir, great to see you. Thanks for having me. That's a pleasure, man. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. Listen, we're going to go straight into it. 66 questions, as I said. Quick right. fire answers. Don't labor on it. So okay. tell me, Scott, with your ruffled hair, uh, what is your wake up ritual? <laughs> Clearly, it's not brush my hair in the morning. Those of you who can't see this, I'm a bit disheveled, but yes. Samir promised me it's video only. It is video Wake up, only. Coffee right away. Got to get oh, the coffee. Yeah. Got to get that in the veins. And I just kind of like catch up on stuff. I got, you know, I sort of curl up with my iPad in the morning for 45 uh -huh. minutes or an hour and just yeah, kind of yeah. like randomly go through. So it sort of wakes me up. I don't like to right. sort of jump right on the computer and yeah, yeah, start yeah. cranking yeah. away. But it's news. It's LinkedIn. It's, yeah, yeah. it's did my yeah. kids write me. What else is happening? So it's really yeah. kind of like a, a random scrolling sort of kind nice. of thing. But it kind of gets me going a slow then, wake like, up that's good it is that's yeah good. i'm at yeah. a point where that's that that works for me <laughs> i'm gonna send i'm gonna send you a hairbrush in the mail though okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> what well yeah this is this is a daunting question for me to ask you what's your biggest strength my biggest strength, creativity that's yeah. what i think i gotcha. just I, I i just kind of ooze that if you will yeah. Yeah. But I've always been a creative person in a variety mm -hmm. of ways. Mm -hmm. And I really think that that's my strongest suit that I mm -hmm. play. I mm -hmm. mean, back when I was, you know, interviewing for jobs, they'd ask me the same thing. And I would start yeah. with that answer. Yeah. But just being able to actually, you know, look at a, you know, start with a blank whatever and then create something out of it or find a bunch of elements that are sort of random and then make that into something new. Those are, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. really exhilarating for me. But I know I... I can kind of lean on that creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it shows anyway. Your your right. creative soul <laughs> comes out at, at, at you know, oozes out from you at every at every every angle, I would say. Um, so what's the biggest learning experience you've ever had? Ever? Yeah. Uh, I know you've geez. probably had many, but you know, what's the one that sticks uh, in your head? Oh boy. Um I think uh, you know, when I think of the business side. I think engaging with senior leaders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a way that is, you know, that you're really talking with them. And so working, I've, I've worked with a disproportionate amount of this sort of a type of learning experience, mm -hmm. disproportionate amount of, of, of CEOs and, and top leaders in my career, both as somebody engaging with them on the client side, but also in my own companies. And I work mm -hmm. for some really large companies that always literally always had a relationship with the CEO. Yeah. And so finding that way to get into their office and their conversations and doing it without pissing off everybody in between me hierarchically and the CEO, which doesn't always happen. <laughs> which you, can, uh, you can't avoid that, can you? It, sometimes no you way. just simply can't. Um, no. And uh, What do they call them? The, gatekeepers? Gatekeepers or just, yeah. you know, my boss's boss wants to know oh, why yes. I'm talking to his boss's yeah, boss, yeah. right? And true, it's just kind of weird. So yeah, yeah. learning how to navigate that ah, politically. I don't know if that's yeah, very the good. biggest thing, but it's... Yes, it's, but it's it, one of the biggest things, I guess. It's, it's it, you know, yeah. if you want to survive the way I did in, in, mm -hmm. in the corporate world. Mm. Uh, and I would always say, look, I'm not here with an agenda, which was actually a, one of the first CEOs I talked to when I was working at VNU, which is a large data company. He actually interrupted me right in the beginning. He goes is there an agenda here? Do you have an agenda? And I was like, <laughs> no. He goes, okay, good. Because they're so used to people coming yes, in. With a three-point kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, and I'm, you know, am I trying to, like, move something mm -hmm. hierarchically, mm -hmm. organizationally? And so just mm -hmm. dealing with a lot of that stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. is that Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Are there any hobbies you will never give up? They'll never give up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kayak, which is fun. I oh, make cool. things again, yeah. sort of that's the creative aspect of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, put stuff together. You know, I, I consider myself kind of a, an editing hobbyist. So my oh, yes. work that I do in video started oh, yeah. off when I was a kid doing Super 8 movies. And oh, wow. What I would consider okay. real editing. Yeah. Where yeah. you have to like yeah. cut the frame and. Yep. And splice it back together again. And, and like, yeah, you yeah, put yeah, the, yeah. you know, yeah. just. And, I used to, and, I used uh, to see my father doing that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 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 So I was, yeah. 
it's uh so i i love it i'm a, i'm like a, addicted to timing on video and i just <laughs> i just love it yeah. i could just imagine you seeing that no it didn't go right oh it's that, oh it's just yeah. and, and and for me it's really exhilarating to to like cut a frame or yep. two and yep. then have yep. it be 10 times better that's all oh, yeah. sometimes it yeah, takes yeah. so yeah, yeah. You know. so what makes you angry bullies make me angry <laughs> Well, well, when people, oh, and this is again, sort of like my whole life from when I was yeah. a kid to even, you know, a few days ago dealing with ridiculous people in my building I, mm. in, a, in a condominium and, you know, there's always personalities there, but I just bridle at, at, at when people are just bullies and I mm. have, you know, stood mm. up to more than my share of them in a variety yeah, yeah. of ways, but I just, yeah. I just cannot stand it. I yep. just can't. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Um, do you have a first memory of life? I, I guess so. It was kind of dark and then suddenly it became lighter and there were a bunch of people with masks and I was upside down. And got <laughs> Don't smashed. give me that. <laughs> Don't give me that. Just say no. Moment. Just I say just no, moment. Scott. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, early on, you know, a little, I remember, uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of, with my parents at some sort of picnic in a tent. It's not the first time I've thought about this. And it's just sort of like a glimmer of being with them. They were together. Yeah, yeah. My parents were divorced when I was fairly young. So like mm. remembering them together in yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Southern California, which is where I grew up. Oh, uh, beautiful. Sort of that beautiful. sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Tell me what's the best compliment you've ever received. There was, uh, when I was at Dun & Bradstreet, when mm -hmm. I was brought into Dun and Bradstreet, I was brought in to help them tell a better story about one of their core products, which was master data, the way to find it. Right. And so I was there and I put the story together and we were presenting to one of their partners, one of their biggest partners. Um, and it was a European partner and the head of marketing was there. And I was mm -hmm. pretty bold about just like, I actually took their marketing examples and changed it to the way I thought it should be, Sure. which was pretty daring in front of that. You know, I'm like, yeah, put, yeah. on purpose, put dramatic, like red X's on stuff mm -hmm. and said, no, it should mm -hmm. be this. And afterwards that CMO came up to me and he said, and I quote this all the time, you've given us a new way to talk about what we already know. Okay. Like, cool. I like beautiful. That. Like yeah, yeah. I, I really, I just yeah. I, Wonderful. every time I get you know sort of down, I remember that it's like yeah, that's what I do, <laughs> and I actually use that line in a lot of presentations I do now, yeah. probably unattributed. Yeah. But it's like what I am trying to do for you is mm -hmm. to give you a new way to talk about what you already know. Mm -hmm. I can't teach mm -hmm. you about data management, but I yep. can teach you how to talk about it. Yeah, that's really yeah. all I do. Yeah, now. very good, very good. Uh, what makes you smile the most? Uh. My kids make me smile. Uh, good stories make me smile. Yep. Funny stuff makes me smile. Yep. Uh, getting something right creatively just is yep. a thrill. When something, mm -hmm. you know, you work mm -hmm. on something and it look, all of a sudden it just sort of gels and you realize. Yeah, it all comes together. Early yep. in my career, I would go, I would like show stuff to people and go, like, doesn't this look real? Yeah. It's like, you know, so I've kind of come <laughs> past that, but it's just a delight, especially if you're a creative person to have mm -hmm. something work because mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. everything works. Yeah. True. You know, and, true. And, and you don't always know why it doesn't work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you don't always get everything to work, yeah. but when it does, it's just a magic. It's moment. magical. Yeah. Yeah. Me... Yeah. Do you have a secret talent that nobody knows about? That nobody Is... knows about. Yeah. I mean, maybe your <laughs> wife does. But no one else yeah, does, you know. My girlfriend, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I, I can blow bubbles. I can blow a square bubble. A square a bubble. I learned from a friend of mine, and I have blown probably the biggest bubbles some people have ever seen in their life. Oh yeah. Um, with this what? bubble contraption that I oh I see I bought from somebody, but uh, it was years ago. But I, I, I love bubbles. That's a person. Oh, I see. Of mine uh -huh. and uh, bubbles. Uh, we'll have to so call I'm, you bubbles I'm, now. I'm good at I'm good at blowing bubbles. Yes, that's my <laughs> I guess that'll, that's my that's new your moniker. secret talent. The awesome. bubble whisperer. Bubble that's whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really whisper with them, but anyway, um, no. if you weren't doing what you're doing right now, what would you be doing? I think I would be in the creative arts somewhere. Yeah, whether it's you know writing, acting, comedy, mm. something. I'm just mm. like you know like tell people I have a fear of not public speaking. You know, I yes. just, 
Yeah, yeah. And just a ham through and yep. through. So good. What are the three yeah. things you can't live without? Uh, well, my partner for sure, Marianne, who's <laughs> the data whisperer, whisperer. She keeps me calm. She's my business partner. She's my life partner. If we live together, we're uh, perfect. Officially, domestic always need partners. one of those. Yeah. Uh, and then I would say uh, uh, coffee and mm. uh, and 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 carbonated water, seltzer. <laughs> seltzer. <laughs> seltzer beverages are just constant <laughs> for me. Yeah. I'm still in the coffee phase of today. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, well, it's early for you, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's not yeah. that early, though, is it? It's not that early. No. It's not that early. No, you, you just wake up, Rachel. It was a bit longer this morning. That's all. Um, I had to work all day yesterday. That's what oh, happened to dear. me. Like, oh, dear. Oh, a whole day I had Scott. to work. Poor Scott. <laughs> Couldn't get I'm up. I'm getting over it. <laughs> okay. So what fictional, char- what fictional character would you want to be? Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. <laughs> it's an idol of mine. <laughs> He's just, uh, really, I just, an idol of mine. Daffy Duck. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. So, uh, any specific yeah. quotes from Daffy? Oh, what, it, um, I, I can only do it once. There was a, there's a, like, an iconic cartoon. Mm-hmm. And I used to work with this guy. Um, who was an early mentor of mine and yeah. he was super creative too. Yeah. And so we were always, when, when that happens early on, especially in sort of like a business setting, people start expecting stuff like, you know, yes. I would write funny songs at the holiday party and he would right. sort of do right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every once in a while, so then you get this like pressure of like, okay, you need to deliver that. You need to perform. Yeah. And not every button. It's like, well, how about somebody else come to the party? And we would collaborate a lot and sort of commiserate a lot. And we both, mm-hmm actually found we both realized that we both love daffy duck right and there's a there there's a cartoon where he's up against bugs bunny and they're doing this they're they're doing a show mm-hmm. and every time daffy does this wilder and wilder acts and gets like literally crickets <laughs> and bugs just needs to like do a couple of tap dances and yeah, the whole yeah, audience yeah. goes absolutely yeah. Nuts. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the final thing that that daffy comes out to do is it's this long they actually cut it now because they don't want kids watching this right and he does this long complicated trick where he drinks like nitroglycerin and then gasoline yeah, and yeah. then dynamite yeah. and all the and then he lights the match and he <laughs> swallows the match oh no and he blows up <laughs> and he gets and a big applause they're like and the audience goes ah. Crazy. absolutely wild and yeah, bugs yeah. is like daffy that's great that's great that's you know yeah, yeah. that's yeah. wonderful and he's floating up to heaven <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, says like, as they do. i can only do it once yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind Fantastic. of our like little code word between me and this mentor of mine it was like only do you can it only once. do it once so yeah i remember that what's the last show that you binge watched uh white lotus ah yes a lot of people have said that actually. Yes. It's like, what's number one or number two? Yeah. Number one, and we number decided one. we didn't watch want to watch number two. Oh, it was like oh, it was boy. sort of dark comedy. It was funny. We got it, but it was just it was too dark. It was through. much darker than number one. I, I don't want to go through all this yeah, like yeah, a yeah. second version of all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Depravity okay. and pain and angst and like that. So <laughs> it's like I prefer more of you know, I mean. Brilliant show, wonderful. Yeah, I get great it, show. but it was like, yeah. you want to watch another eight episodes of that? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. What's the most adventurous thing you've done in your life? I'm not that physically adventurous. So, mm-hmm. you know, I never did kind of, you know, cliff skiing or whatever, but I think I'm probably more socially adventurous. Mm-hmm. So, again, you're asking sort of like the number one thing, which is hard to rank, but something that comes to mind is me uh sort of interrupting a Gartner conference <laughs> present uh keynote from uh uh Francis Ford Coppola. So it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll try and tell it shortly. So like there was a, a Gartner conference and yep. Francis Ford Coppola was the keynote. Oh, wow. And it was actually for a different part of the conference that I wasn't in. Right. So I just sort of got into that. Was Wandered like, in way did I'm you? not seeing Coppola. Yeah. yeah. I mean it was back when they used to separate the data management conference from uh-huh. the BI conference. Oh, I it was see. Like the data management group. They didn't was want the two to speak basement. to each other. Yeah. 
and the BI folks had like the ballroom. I mean, there's really like a segregation there. That oh, was wow. Not necessary. Wow. It really felt like second class citizens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, and we had like, you know, some insurance client talking at lunch and the BI folks had Francis Ford <laughs> Coppola. So it's like, there's no way I'm not going. And so I, I get in there and I, I get to like the 10th row. Yeah. So I'm really close. And he's just, you know, an icon for me. I think yeah, yeah. Godfather. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all this, yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah. master story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I want to ask him a question. They come to the question parts. And so this Gartner analyst stands up up front and asks a question. And then I see the person next to him ask the next question. And then the person next to him asks the next question. It's like, oh, yeah. this is the this is fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I catch his eye. Okay? Yeah. So I catch a couple of his eye like this. And he points to me. He's like, you're next. And I stand up and I ask him this question actually about storytelling. Right. But you could just see sort of the, you know, the, the, the sneers over on the Gartner front, front uh, row there. People like, you know, I could, and my face is up on the wall. And then after that, all these people were coming up to me because it was, you know, projected and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was, if may not the most adventurous thing, I knew it took some guts to just go like, Good I'm for you. Do this, especially when it, I realized, you know, it wasn't even a fair game here. They yeah, had yeah. set up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, special clients who got to ask Coppola a question. But I actually asked him a question about storytelling. I said, how do you know a good story? Yeah. How do you know a good story when you hear it? Is there a short and response to that? He His short response was, you just feel no. it. You just know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, no, yeah. you know, formula. Yeah. I was waiting yeah. for, you know, here it is, the Oracle. Tell me what. It's, yes. But it's like, it was validation of things that I've worked on before. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. kind of helped me trust my instinct more to know yeah sure. something works or something yep, doesn't, doesn't. Yep. yeah doesn't yeah how would you define yourself in three words again i would say creative i would say uh uh humorous funny mm -hmm. humor is mm -hmm. obviously a, a suit I, I lean on a lot and then uh ingenious i would add ingenious. that word. that's what my that's what my girlfriend calls me because i uh -huh. figure stuff out i figure yeah. like and even uh, almost mechanically. It's like, okay, uh -huh. if we did this this way, or if I fixed up all the time too. So I'm like yep. a tinkerer. Okay. When I was growing up, or when my kids were growing up, they called, there was this inbox on my desk and they just called it the magic desk because they would put, <laughs> they would Stuff put in broken there. things there yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they yeah. would be fixed. In and the like outbox. Things, things don't, like things aren't broken in my house. I go yeah. to an Airbnb and stuff is loose or doesn't work. It's like, how do people live this way? You know, I'm tightening things. And stuff like that. You know, you oh, figure brilliant. out, like, you know, ways to, to, to make stuff work mechanically. Yeah. Even. yeah. I mean, that's, awesome. That's I love that. <laughs> is, is there anything that is currently inspiring you in the data world right now? I, I'm inspired by the, the, First of all, the, the, the idea that data management, even though it's been kind of taken over by sort of the data engineer talk and the architecture talk, but mm -hmm. that it's that it seems, you know, come from the data governance, I guess, part of it now is feels like it's 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 kind making of making a comeback. Due. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you don't want to say a comeback because it's like there was never anything worked in technology without data management. And that's, you know, one of my things I play on all the time, but that it that it seems to be. <clears throat> you know, uh, getting more in the front seat and also mm -hmm. this trend, which is going on for a while of, you know, personified by the CDO of having a data office that mm -hmm. is disconnected from IT. Yeah, yeah. And I think that is opening up a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. and changing, hopefully the nature of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because as you know, and I know, it's always like, you know, when IT was running data, it was really, you know, it yeah. was never information. Like the CIO, you know, I don't know why that I was in there. I mean, it was always technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and they kind of got data because. No one else, else wanted it. Because yeah. data is in computers and the CIO yeah, exactly. has, you know. <laughs> but that, that is inspiring for me. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and what's also inspiring is actually kind of the group that I hang with, which you hang with as well. I mean, all these, these content creators out there who mm -hmm. are really making some noise and, and getting mm -hmm. some traction and, and yeah. creating that that buzz in the marketplace so these yeah, things are kind i of think inspiring so inspiring me yeah yeah cool uh what's the best piece of advice you've ever received again ever ever let me give you a couple uh <laughs> early in my career I, i've always been like i've always been creative i was 
you know, it's funny that people are all into content today. I've been doing that for my entire career. You know, I wrote, yeah. I, wrote yeah. I had a column in a magazine, mm -hmm. you know, when there were magazines, you know, it was the trade magazine. Oh, oh, magazines. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Things. Those things. Yeah. yeah. Remember those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but early on, so I got this column and I worked with this editor who's still yeah. a great friend of mine and I was stuck and he just kind of went, he, and he told me one day, he just said, do something. Cause right now you got nothing. Ah, so okay. You should do something. Yeah, then yeah. you'll have something. Something. And it's yep. like, and it's, yep. you know, and when you're faced with trying to yeah. create something, do what? Where do I start? How do I do? Is, and, yep. and it kind of yep. couples to my my advice my father gave me about writing early on. I mean, this was like in junior high school. Yeah. He just said, "Do the easy part first." Mm -hmm. Which is kind of complimentary to do something. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're starting with the hard part, you don't always oh, start yeah, a story tough. once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if you're starting at the beginning and it's in your head the beginning, but yeah. you have an idea about this is the middle part, do that middle do that. part. Yeah, yeah. And everything yeah. else will come out, won't it? But yeah. get something going because if, you know, that it, leap it, from zero to one is the most important. Oh, it's, it really <laughs> is. Sometimes. Yeah. And I think that's the thing about being, you know, about, about creating content. You could literally sit there for an, a couple of hours thinking, what should I write about that is so intriguing? And and that and that's the that's the bit I think that we're all trying to get to, right? Something that's so super duper amazing, but actually, just write and just just, write, just get out yeah, there, and just think, just you know, do it. You know, don't think it's got to so be like critical. this or it's got to be like that or anyway. What three words describe living in the U.S.? Uh freedom. Mm -hmm choice i think mm -hmm. i mean there's just and and, and i feel choice. this all the time when yeah. i see i mean despite all the craziness going on here when you see other stuff going on around the world i just feel lucky yeah i mean i feel lucky that i'm in this you know you think about it conceptually how much geography has to do with one's yeah. life yeah you yeah, know absolutely. where you are physically despite mm -hmm. all this is can be such a determinant about how your life even mm -hmm. is or not mm -hmm. you know whether it's you know, whatever, whatever, there's a hundred examples around the world. Yeah. Yep, but yep. I feel really fortunate yep. to have somehow mm -hmm. miraculously mm -hmm. been born and despite all that, the mm -hmm. nuttiness. But uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. true. What's heavily played on your music playlist right now? Um, what's always on there is Miles Davis. I'm oh, a awesome. jazz guy. I ah. mean, that's like, you know, my funeral playlist. It's on there. Uh, but lately we've been going through a really strong Harry Styles stint Ooh. driven by my, my, uh, partner. She loves him, but we went to see him in September and, uh, right. and it was a blast. We brought our own boas. And, uh, so he was, and we, uh, and we share a playlist. We share the okay. Google play thing. Yep. So when you get, yep. uh, we got the reports back, you know, they started yep. sending reports. Yeah. Back, yeah. Yeah. What, what, we're what, like, what have you listened to? We're, we're in the top. 0.1% of yep. Harry Styles. Oh, streamers. gosh. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dubious distinction. But exactly. I most of well, the there credit. you go. <laughs> but yeah, he's something. Yeah. What's your guilty pleasure? Uh, baked goods. Baked goods. <laughs> nice. I'm a nice. Uh, like bread is my chocolate. I mean, oh. I will. A really good what kind, what kind of, of bread, though. What kind of bread? Uh, any any kind, or almost any sourdough, okay. French bread, any yeah. good crust, hot yeah. bread. I mean, I'm just a sucker for it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. More than sweet stuff. So yes. I would, you know, more than cake or it's not really the sweet part it's more of the you know yeah, non yeah, the, 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 non stuff, the savory but, you know, they except for say. donuts man i would eat a donut every day <laughs> if, I, if my doctor wouldn't tell me no but, uh, <laughs> oh well there you go doctors always on your shoulders eh what yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what what was the most recent book that you finished spare we, oh we you did spare you did <laughs> spare yeah. and despair spare and despair right we had uh uh, uh Drove down to Florida, which takes two days. So it's like, all right, popped uh, the other Harry. So yes, we, we're yes. Harry and Harry. We got double okay. Harry. So you're into Harry's, I see. Yeah, okay. we're into Harry's of all sorts. Yeah, yeah. I just realized that. <laughs> so if, <laughs> if, you, if you could go back in time, what would you tell your 16 year old self? Uh, pack light. Pack just, light. <laughs> I'm like, 
physically don't bring as much <laughs> stuff mentally don't have as much you know emotionally yeah, don't yeah. let it all but just yep yeah <laughs> backlight yep. yeah yeah very I'm still good. working on that, but uh, oh, okay, it's, okay, I'm getting there. Yeah, I can see the big couch behind you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if you could switch lives with one person for a day, who would it be? Oh, a beat. I don't. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Today is Paul McCartney, but pick. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know Probably if it's today's Beatles, Paul, Paul McCartney, McCartney, but it's you mean you know the Paul McCartney who was going out on the road and you know doing the show. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah I, that just, Paul McCartney. You know, okay, that Paul McCartney. What's the one thing you've always wanted to try but never got around to it? Stand up comedy. Ah, you like gotta do real, it. Like a real sort like of a proper. Yeah. Like a proper. Yeah. You know, I would say my presentations these days have an element of that. And I yep. try and, you know, kind of lean more toward the humorous and dramatic and entertaining side, but yep. to actually do sort of a full set of material mm -hmm. would be. Well, I'm there kind you of go. That. So I, yeah, yeah. I think the close, I, do I, it, might get there, I might get there at Big Data London. So at Big Data London, I'm doing a session that has already been uh, rejected by two other event producers. Okay. Uh, because of the title, it's called Data's the New Bullshit. And um, <laughs> I don't know why they didn't want to. And so I'm going to go from there. And it's really about like the just the craziness about how we talk about yeah talking yeah. about data and yeah, I'm yeah. take my you know my best bits and put them all together and really well try and... I, I i look forward to that i all look right. forward to seeing it on, so i got some yeah you, yeah absolutely if you had to change something in the world right now what would it be i would stop the war in ukraine yep immediately there we go immediately really just yep. immediately yep. and yep. you know and whatever that takes all those mm -hmm. other ancillary things to stop yep. it but just, yep. it's just I, I was a history major, right? So even mm -hmm. having, I mean, anybody anyway, just naturally, but having that perspective and, you know, a lot of folks who are just devastated by mm -hmm. like, just the, you know, I, I thought we were past that. I didn't know we still do that as, you know, it's just Seems like that, humans doesn't it? are yeah. dealing with each other. It's yeah. just yeah. a horrific thing to have yeah. to it's, you know, it's, just it's, witness yeah. on TV, much less. All, all live, war is, yeah. yeah, all war is, is, is awful. Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, yeah. I guess you know, human beings like that. They want to dominate and they want to kill people and they want to get over. You know, and it's geography, right? It's yeah, like, it's you know, geography. I'm yeah. next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, that's yeah. Anyway, what are we on? I've lost count. Spiral on, on like, that one. Are we on like uh, thirty-three? Where are we? Are we got a midpoint. We're on thirty-four. Here? If you could resurrect, <laughs> one, if you could, right? Yeah, yeah. If you could resurrect one person from history and put them in the world today, who would it be? Mark Twain. I'll okay. Bring back Mark Twain. Good. Do you have a favorite exercise? Oh, favorite exercise? Rowing. I row. Rowing. I kayak. Nice. So that for me is, on the waters. You know, on the water. Yeah. And I also have a rowing machine, which I don't use enough, but okay. I love it. Yeah. Love it. What's the one thing you wish you knew at the age of nineteen? At nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, probably more stuff about computers. Uh -huh. was, they were just starting in a way you know, Apple was coming out and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. there's probably something mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. just technically mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. earlier, which uh -huh. would have gotten me into data earlier. <laughs> oh, you could have been technical then. I could have been slightly yeah. technical. You yeah. could have been yeah. slightly technical. <laughs> <laughs> that would be scary. I don't um... know. Maybe, not. Maybe, I need to re Maybe I need to change that. Maybe buy Apple. That's what I would have. Yeah. So <laughs> If you weren't living in the U.S., where would you be living? Probably the Netherlands. Yeah? Oh. Yeah. Every time I've gone, I've just loved it. You've the loved people it. are wonderful. They yeah, seem, yeah. you know, really fun and cool. And the whole, again, the sort of geography is really nice. Either yeah, there yeah. or, you know, yeah. somewhere in uh, in the Caribbean mm. Mm. would be. Maybe even more lovely. Yeah. How about a... the guy changed the Caribbean somewhere? Yeah, yeah, you've just changed it. Those Dutch people now are not just gonna change they're it. not gonna yeah, let well... you back into their country. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> Although there is the Dutch Caribbean island, so you know. Ah, oh, yeah, maybe that's yeah. a combo. So there, you can the couple them together. Right. There you go. If you could offer one piece of advice to upcoming data leaders, what would it be? Learn your business. There we go. Learn your business. You cannot you've taken as I told my the children. words out of my mouth. Learn. Tell yeah. my children who are two of, yeah, yeah. of whom are in the 
in the data parts of their companies, which I yep. take some credit for. Do you take, oh, you take credit for that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they, both of them admitted that they knew more about this than they realized. Just, oh, really? You know, hearing, just through you know, osmosis. Hearing, just yeah. hearing me talk on the phone at yeah, home yeah, yeah. or being in the car while I'm having a discussion yeah, yeah. on the cell phone or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can't, what, and what I, the advice I told them was you cannot learn too much about the business that you're in. Yep. Yep. And, and you know, and, and, uh, whatever that's product or services that you've got, you know, learn what it is, how it gets there, why people want it, you know, mm -hmm. forget the data side of it, mm -hmm. learn that business mm -hmm. and then the opportunities will come. Yeah. But yeah. And you know, all, all these, you know, there's a, a lot of folks in the data space who complain a lot about the lack of business engagement. Yep. But you you can earn that really quickly if you come into the business discussion with an understanding of what the hell your company does and why. Correct. It does. Yeah. 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 Yep. Absolutely. Learn how they make money. Yeah. Learn I know you do, do a lot of that too. Yeah. I mean, you do a lot of that work formally with people to have them yeah, understand. Yeah. Look, this is you yeah. know this is how you make the widgets and this is mm -hmm. how, where they go and this is why mm -hmm. they're important. Mm -hmm. Um. What was the best lesson your parents ever taught you? They they both taught me a lot about relationships, about humor, about yep. and my dad was just a, a just a, a, a both of my parents were stars in a way. Um but they just had this great presence and I think they both taught me through just sort of that how to yeah. manage that, how to deal with that my dad would walk in the room and he uh, always he always looked like he owned the place um <laughs> and uh you know specific lessons again sort of his you know start with the hard part or start with the easy part um when i this is another thing i've used metaphorically he's teaching me how to make a bed and he goes start with the hardest corner first okay like the opposite of his writing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. advice yeah. But again, I take that sort of metaphorically. In some cases, you do because if you do the hard part, the hard corner over the corner, then the other parts are sort of easier. Easier. And my yeah, yeah. and my mom was a was an had this incredible talent to again humor was throughout my family, and she would just go. Sometimes she wouldn't laugh. She would just go, "That was funny." <laughs> like <laughs> yes, like or this is or that or that doesn't work. Right. Yeah. So she, she knew. She knew. She knew. Yeah, they both had a sense that was that was pretty incredible. Uh, and I think just sort of you know whether that's one lesson or many, it yeah. was yeah. certainly something that I I took to heart. Fantastic. So, what's your favorite food? Chicken parmesan. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite podcast? Mark. Other than this one, Mark. Oh, uh, don't be silly. Just Mark Marin. WTF. WTF, okay. Mark oh, okay. I'm Mark Marin. I haven't heard that one. A podcast you... pioneer. Ah, Mark. Okay. How do you relax? Uh, just hanging out. I mean, I sort of shut down. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an extremely outgoing, social kind mm. of person, but mm. I can shift into tropical mode. Yes. And just be. Sip a couple of pina coladas. Quiet. Yeah. And not engage. And yes. Just sit well, there. You, for me you need that, though, don't you? You need yeah. that. Yeah, my... you know, floating some water somewhere. So Yo, okay. you can't be at that, you know, boom, boom. No, 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 not all the away. time. Not all the time. What's a movie that made you cry? <laughs> I'm already cheered up. I just, <laughs> uh, Gregory Peck is just Gregory Peck. So really? I would say there's there's three movies that I always cry at at the end, and they're all and there are three Gregory Peck movie Peck movies. Um, Roman Holiday. Oh yes, yeah, fantastic. Just uh, Love, um, yeah. Kill a Mockingbird. Yep, I and mean. the Man in the Gray Flannels too. Oh and yeah. So I could, I yeah. I can just see the last moments of each of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know. He just gets me. This sort of mm -hmm. stoic, strong, mm -hmm. but you know, emotional. But and he's not, and and I think in all three of them, he doesn't even say anything. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. at the very end. Mm -hmm. But just his presence. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Just, it yeah. just gets me every time. <laughs> I'm a mess, but I'm a sucker for Gregory Peck endings. Well, who would you say is your biggest inspiration? Uh, well, let me see. You know, I'm I, I, I'm inspired by you know. I, again, it's it's hard to sort of rank all this stuff. I was obviously I was inspired by my parents. I'm inspired by my mm. 
by what some of my kids are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm inspired a lot about with a lot from the people that I'm kind of playing with. I mean, I'll yeah. put one answer, you know, Kate Strachney, who I think, you know, mm-hmm. she is just a machine. And mm-hmm. she is a machine. She just, yeah. You know, and she's a one woman media conglomerate. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just the way yeah. she cranks stuff out. And oh, it's amazing. And the quality yeah. and the yeah. depth. And the she's, fact that she can write the books and this and that. It's it's yeah. just. So she's definitely oof. inspired. I, you know, a person who inspired me in my career as it is today is, mm-hmm. again, sort of picking up, it was Bernard Marr. Oh, yes. Who, mm-hmm. When I came out of the corporate world and went, all right, I'm just sort of playing with this, you know, content stuff and LinkedIn presence stuff. And I was, I I stumbled on him and it wasn't any sort of envy or anything. It was just like, wow, he's, he's making it go with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's room for this. There's like people can do Do this and actually have it be what they do. Mm -hmm. And I've had some Mm -hmm. connections with him and I think we've become friends over LinkedIn and I've had a couple conversations with him, but uh, I think I actually posted a, something last year where the, 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 one of the big moments was I, I, there was a picture, he, he had posted something where he's going to some conference and he's sitting in like first class and he's got this glass of champagne. Oh yeah. And he's yeah. like, I'm going to, to speak at this conference. And I'm like <laughs> someday. And so yes. last year I did this, this keynote at, um, in France and they flew me out, you know, business class and yep. they, and they also flew out my partner, so that was yep. wonderful. And yep. we're sitting there, and I said, "Okay, you got to get you got to take the like, shot." I need my Bernard Mar <laughs> moment. And I posted both pictures kind of next to oh, each other. Oh, fantastic! Like, there we go. So yeah, that was yeah, you know yeah. inspirational. Brilliant. And in that same time, sort of something else that was inspirational. You know, my was I was watching uh, uh, American Idol, and uh-huh. Katy Perry, who I love. She was somebody didn't win or whatever, but they had built this sort of following and. Mm base and she she just sort of said it's up to you what you do with that yeah like yeah this is you're real you've got something now you know again sort of this theme i'm realizing is like like do something with it yeah realize you've got there's something there but it's up to you to make it into mm-hmm. something more mm-hmm. and nobody mm-hmm. else going to do it for you so mm-hmm. i found that kind of inspiration yeah yep. what what can you see from your window from this window, I can't see much, but from my, uh, uh, I live in, there's two apartments that we have in this building oh. and where we live is this is sort of my studio area and, mm-hmm. and uh, said, there's not even a bed here. I, my commute is one floor in this apartment, but on the other side, we live on in the fifth floor of this massive of this apartment building. It's like 50 units. That's mm-hmm. literally on the water. Oh, fantastic. In, in on Long Island Sound, we're on the Connecticut side. And so we mm-hmm. have like a, a hundred mile horizon of Long Island Sound. Mm-hmm. There's water everywhere. Amazing. There's yeah. birds, there's a there's a lighthouse, there's boats in the summer. I kayak yeah. off of this parking pier. Yeah. I've lived in this building for 13 years now. And the yeah. way I describe it to new people who come in, I go, you will see something new every day if yeah. you pay attention. But mm-hmm. there's always something new out mm-hmm. those windows, mm-hmm. and I mean, we would just sit. I the, we just sit out there. We call watching the world go by, and mm-hmm. it's uh, mm-hmm. boats go by, planets, stars. Yep. We yep. saw a rocket yep. once. There's, yep. all, I mean, it's just and then amazing. There's all these different fields of view. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. it's it's a spect. I'm really stunning, fortunate. stunning. Yeah, it's just wonderful. So this side is the other side, which is just yeah, yeah, yeah. The park, so I don't yeah. get too distracted. Okay. Good. What's a data trend that you would like to see disappear? Uh, I I think all this. I I would like to see disappear the the marketing work that a lot of technologies companies do to create new terminology for things that already exist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know they want to coin like a new phrase or a new yep. word and yep. then make it that thing yep. and i find that just at times almost repulsive i call it the 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 mean girl school of marketing <laughs> where i don't know if you're familiar with that movie but uh, i think it's rachel who's the main mean girl there's another one i should know the characters so one of the mean girls is always saying oh that's so fetch you know that's okay. really fetch uh-huh. and the main mean girl goes, just stop trying to make, stop trying to make fetch work. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That pretty make fetch happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I had that when I was working at Dun & Bradstreet, I don't my name and names. That marketing department was filled with people who were trying to make fetch happen. Uh-huh. And it was uh-huh. so, and I was on another side where I was trying to make, trying to clarify their story because we're yeah. talking to people who do know the terminology. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's like, this is a technical field and you got to use the right words. They yep. can smell marketing BS a mile mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. And so this, this, and it still continues. Whether it's oh, TV of or course it will. I, I don't won't, think I won't we'll ever stop. Any names or, or any terms here, but but, it, this, but it will never stop, Scott. Yeah, but I there's mean, people who do it really well. There's, yeah, you know, okay. I think terminology is important, and it, I think it is. coming up with 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 new ways to talk about stuff yeah, yeah. that you already know, obviously, is really important. Yeah, yeah, but but, but this, most of them will want to come out with something that's dazzling, and suddenly yeah, the narrative this, changes, and you know, it's it's this, the same old, same old, right? And this yeah. relentless attempt yeah. to sort of coin a yeah. new wacky term yeah, yeah, yeah. that just is yeah. truly meaningless. It's just like, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Money. I agree. No wonder that. the business doesn't understand us. No, want to pay no, not say, at all. Oh, they're coming up with the new, you know, analytics graph hub fabric mesh. That's what yes, we got it. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or I like the one that you you talk about. I pass gas. I pass gas. Yes. <laughs> it sounds better. Know, that, sounds better with that, an American accent. I pass that's gas. The, that's the that's the punchline. So for those of you who don't know the backup, that's an integrated platform as a service with governance as a service called I pass gas. Just recently released from stealth but deadly mode. I'm sure it was. Yeah, yeah and it was shot down from the sky, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, it's an elevator pitch you do not want to hear or be involved with. Yes. Okay. Well, here we go. What's a superpower you wish you had? Time travel. What's something you won't be doing in 10 years' time? Hopefully work. <laughs> Looking as back fun as your... this work is, <laughs> well, hopefully I won't have to be doing much more of it. But, okay, uh, but unless I back... really love it. But I, yeah, know, I, yeah, but you do I can't love complain it. too much about, about the Looking... work I do at all. Yeah. Looking back on your life, stuff. is there anything you would have done differently? I think, and I think about this often, because I am kind of spontaneous, and I am quick-witted, and I'm not saying all of those are always the best things, but I think if I had had a better understanding earlier in my life of you don't need to take every shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and whether it was a humorous thing or a comment or a move or whatever, that's some sense of like, don't take every shot because you don't make every shot, but mm-hmm. also there's a balance there. I found myself like, I, I, I stopped. It was. It wasn't that long ago. Somebody's telling me a story, and I kind of knew where it was going. And I said right. the punchline. Oh, it wasn't a joke, but it was like, oh. And I realized, oh, shut up. You know, I was like, let yeah. that. Just because you can figure, let them have that moment and tell that story and react to it, even if you guess the ending. Yeah. And it was kind of like, you know, yeah, just kind of. You spoiled it for them. Yeah, and <laughs> in a way, I was like, that's not nice. <laughs> no. And and you not know. At and, all. And, and, and it took me, you know, un- I think too long to come to that sort of realization right, in my life. I, right. I, I yeah. Have, uh... Yep. Yep. Don't preempt. Just yeah. let them go with the flow. What's the best? What's the best thing that happened this year for you? It's only m- March. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. So Something good must have happened, Something dude. Ha- yeah. Oh, there's some. I got a couple of really good gigs. Like I said, I'm really thrilled to be at uh, uh, Big Data London. Yeah. Uh, doing this uh, keynote for this association, uh, Auto Care Association. That kind of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Picked up some work from Informatica. I mean, it's sort of, sort of like you know, momentum continues to build, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. a lot of these exciting kind of opportunities Great. are coming. And it's and so for me, I don't know if I could pick one, but seeing that momentum and watching yep. that kind of happened from the journey I've been on the last couple of years. Fantastic. Which movie makes you laugh the hardest? Duck Soup, consistently. Duck Soup. Marx yes, Brothers. Marx Brothers, yeah, I know it. Marx Brothers, yeah. in case you, that, that's probably... I watched it when I was about 12. I remember watching it. You got to watch it. It's a little problematic these days because there's some scenes that are probably not as appropriate. Well, yeah, for, but you but know what? anyway, it was like I mean, whatever, the 30s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but the, the advice I gave my kids was like, and the, when I introduced them to uh, the Marx Brothers, which is like um, required viewing in my household, like fast forward through the music mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the Marx Brothers, and then conversely, 
fast forward through the dialogue in any Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers <laughs> and you'll get what you really need. What you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we don't need to see Harpo play a straight harp. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And believe yeah, me, yeah. Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire movies, the yeah. plot and the dialogue. Yeah, you just want to see the dancing. Yeah, deadly, but That's they, it. you know, it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there's my advice. Good. If you uh, could teach one subject in school, what would it be? I think literature. I mm -hmm. I'm, I admire my uh, uh, my daughter in law is a high school English teacher, mm. and she mm. teaches you know the hardcore stuff, Macbeth. Yep. Wow. Great Gatsby. Yeah, yeah. And you know, again, sort of stories teaching. Yes. And it's yes. All comes back. I'm yeah. seeing my own motif in this discussion here, but this is great <laughs> therapy, by the way. I owe you. Uh, <laughs> Discover yourself in sixty six. Dude, you I mean, you know, I, I should be, I should be. Don't worry. I mean, if it's cathartic yeah, yeah. for you, it's great. You know, that's perfect. Season two, you can offer it as a as a therapy. <laughs> I'm going into see. You are the last one in season two. Do you know that? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Well, actually, a little, 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 little bit of a white lie. I just realized actually the end of season two will be me. Someone's actually turning the tables and oh, I just that, realized. Oh, good for yeah. you. I wish that was yeah. me. I have a quick, do you know who answered your 660 text <laughs> question? <laughs> <laughs> what devil answered that question? I, that would be That's your 11th you do, episode you? if you do the That's math. That's what you yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> What's a skill that you're currently working on mastering, if you are at all? Oh, I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I, I continue to work really hard on the craft that I am. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, yeah. performative kind of business content, mm -hmm. getting better at timing, getting better. Yeah. I listen to my stuff all the time. I, I, I have a list of filler words that I'm sick of hearing myself say. Sure. I sure. try to get better on timing and, yep. and, and, um, editing, you know, you try and, you know, you're a, a one man production team, yeah. right? So yeah. lighting, sound, all that kind of stuff to just get better and better and better yeah. at it. And yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm continually working on that stuff. And, uh, and it's, and it's really fun. I mean, another inspiring quote, I watched this, uh, um, um, tribute to Julie Andrews mm -hmm. and she was talking about how early in her career, somebody said to her, an amateur does something until they get it right. A professional mm -hmm. does something till they can never get it wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And it was Beautiful. Like, okay. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah. I know like I did this event yesterday and I'm not bragging. This is like when you know what you can do, mm -hmm. there's a room of people I haven't spoken yet, and I and this happens to me all the time now, and it's really fun. It's like I know in a moment the energy in the room is going to change. Right, because people are going. This group of people who don't even know me are going to feel differently. Yes, hopefully positively in a minute. But yeah. no matter what, mm -hmm. what I'm about to do, whatever it is, is going to change the nature of sure. this environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's again, it's really thrilling to sort of have a command of that mm -hmm. and know how to use that that you know that capability yep yep what is something that recently moved you uh i'm trying to think i think again some of the stuff you're just seeing out of ukraine mm -hmm. uh, and you know i mean the kid oriented stuff the mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. you know atrocities i mean all this mm -hmm. stuff just tears mm -hmm. at me every day i don't mm -hmm. know what i can do mm -hmm. about it but that was certainly yep Yep. Those are certainly things that I find moving and yeah, yeah. disturbing. Yep. What's one thing you had to learn the hard way? I can't have when to shut up. <laughs> when to just like take the moment, not and, take and, the moment. When yep. to let somebody, you know, that, that kind of collaboration piece. I did a lot of theater, no kidding. Probably no surprise. Um, when I was younger out of school and, you know, community theater, I was never mm -hmm. had the, had the, desire to be kind of you know the people who i was with who wanted to go be actors, actors yep, they had yep. they had a spirit that i didn't have yeah, but yeah. i I'd draw yeah. on the technique every day yep, literally yep. um but keeping those things in mind and knowing when to be you know when mm -hmm. to have the focus and when not to have the focus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and 
sometimes you screw up. I think you said it earlier on, though. I think you said it earlier on. It's all about timing. It's all about how you orchestrate that in that moment. You know, so how do you handle pressure in your career? How what, what, what do you do to? To, I'm looking right now. I don't have a lot of pressure. So no, it's, it's, you it's don't. Rough. Okay. Well, it's, I guess maybe that I, I, I probably do have some pressure. That's not, but it's not like business pressure yes. back in the old yeah, days, yeah, you yeah. know, where you have yeah. like a number to make and a strategy right. to hit and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But you know, breathing is always a good thing, no matter yep. what. I mean, my, you know, when I'm with my partner all the time, she gets you know concerned about. I just go breathe. I breathe. Mean, it's simple. Yep. You think, well, you can't live without breathing. But people don't always do that. No, no, Think no, it they through. don't. Mm. I realize, you know, I, I always get nervous before I do some sort of, you know, gig presentational kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's adrenaline, though. But, but and, and then it took me a while in my career yeah. to realize, okay, that's just part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. You got to challenge. You, know, you go through yeah. this, like, like even this short thing I did in this, in this event yesterday, which was really not that big of a, of an, of a, of a deal or a show, I went through a very short version of, okay, this is going to be great practice to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm going to nail this. Mm-hmm. And then the, I don't know if this is going to work. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. or do I really know it? Or is yep. this the right thing? And this doubt and kind of nervousness. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But at this point I know, okay, that's just, this, you're going through that phase. You're yep. not going to get from A to Z without going through those middle yeah, letters. Of course, and that's but those emotions. That's, yeah, yeah, this is to, yeah. but early in my career was like, oh, am I going to, oh, you know, you get kind of wrapped up into it, yeah. but literally yeah. knowing, no, that is part of the process, yeah. but you can't control it. So just take that Just energy, do it. And, like you yeah, say, that and adrenaline use it. Mm-hmm. and turn that into fuel. And yeah, yeah. Agreed. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely agree. What's something you notice about someone when you first meet them? Kind of how they, how they talk for sure. How they yeah. kind of interact. Uh-huh. how they engage whether they're paying attention i mean yeah. that's the big thing right yeah. and and uh last night we were at this cocktail party afterwards and i was just talking to one guy and we we're kind of going back and forth and there was another person at the table mm-hmm. and they said you two know each other I was <laughs> like no we just met <laughs> <laughs> literally just he's like because you look like you're do-. and and yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know that yeah. you know when you kind of connect with somebody, connect with somebody some yeah. kind of subliminal level it's really yeah. it's really fun but it's based yeah. on that yeah Awesome. Listen, my last question to you. Okay. What would you like to be remembered for? For my humor, for my passion, for my kind of optimism, I mm-hmm. think, in, mm-hmm. in life. I say my, my blood type is like my attitude. Be positive. <laughs> And if I can be remembered oh. for that and, you know, and <laughs> the love I gave folks, hopefully they, they, they keep it in their mind when I'm gone. So that's, that's Fantastic. what I hope I'm, I'm remembered for. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for being on the show. Thank and you. It's been a real pleasure to have you, <laughs> even though fun. you didn't comb your hair. And uh, yes. no, that's fine. No, no, it's that's always your 67th just... question. Where's your brush? Where's your brush? <laughs> Where, no, I tell you, it's in the mail. I'm sending it to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right well look have a great rest of the day whatever you do if it's just chilling out and uh kicking back and relaxing and uh enjoy it enjoy your weekend too super thank you mo- thank so much samir this was fun thanks so thanks much again. all right cheers bye